Are you new to off-roading and trying to figure out what communication device to get? Or maybe you've been running CB for a long time and now you want to switch to something else and trying to figure that out. Maybe you're just looking for some more general information about communications because there's a lot of confusion out there about what the rules are, what the license requirements are, what some of the best options are to use. And I know I had a lot of those questions when I was first starting out. And now that I've been doing this for many years and I've got a little bit of experience and I've got my license, I wanted to take a minute and just share some practical information about communications to help you make a decision on what might be best for you. So that's what we're going to talk about today in this video. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I wanna to have a practical conversation with you all about communications, because there's a lot of good information I think we could discuss, especially for the beginners that maybe just don't know. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about mobile versus handheld communications, talk about CB, FRS, GMRS, ham, and satellite communications. It's all good tools to use, but some may be more practical and easier for you to use, and some may be more advanced, but man, and that's the one you want. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But first, a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not some kind of communications guru. I don't claim to be that at all. Uh, I did a lot of communications work when I was in the military and over the last several years of off-roading and overlanding, I have used all of these tools in one form or another and I did get my ham license several years ago. So I have enough information to be dangerous, uh, but I just wanna share my opinion and practical use. Okay, before we dive into this, I wanna invite you guys to head over to the newly designed trailrecon.com website. Go sign up for our newsletter, check out our store. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy all the information that's over there and we're constantly gonna be updating that. Okay, let's talk about mobile versus handheld because if you're gonna go head out for the first time and you've never used any communication devices, sometimes it's not as easy as just going to your local Walmart, picking something up and heading out. There's definitely more consideration that's gotta be factored in before you go buy your communication device. So one of the first things you should consider is, do you want a hard mounted radio built into your vehicle or do you just wanna carry a handheld device? And there's pros and cons to both of those. So let's talk about mobile devices first. So typically a mobile device is gonna be more expensive than a handheld. You're gonna to need to install it or you're gonna to need to pay somebody to install it. And I actually did a video a couple years ago where we installed a ham radio in my JK. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna go check that out. It's really not that hard to do. And the other great thing about a mobile device is you're always gonna have power to it. You don't have to worry about a battery and you're gonna have an external antenna. So when you are transmitting, that signal is gonna be much stronger, whether you're transmitting or receiving, you're gonna get much better communication than you would with a standard handheld. Now, handheld devices are great because they're a little more budget friendly. They're more compact. You can throw this in a cup holder and you can just put this on your belt and walk around with it. Or if you're spotting, these are a great tool. The disadvantage to uh, a handheld is the antenna is attached to the device and when you are inside your vehicle, that vehicle is going to kind of limit your signal and so it's not gonna be as good as it would be typically with a mobile device. The other thing with a handheld is they have a battery in them and depending on how often you are transmitting and receiving and using it and how big that battery is, it may not even last you all day long. Uh, there are times where I've used some of these devices and we've been talking a lot that I've had to swap out batteries multiple times. And if you're on a trip that's you know a couple days long, you're gonna make sure you need to either bring a charger and keep that thing charged or bring extra batteries. It's a great thing about a mobile device is you don't need to worry about that. I have a mobile device in all my vehicles but I also do carry handhelds because they're so practical. To be able to put this on my hip and talk to the convoy when I'm filming, or to be able to spot somebody, or if somebody's with us and, I'm, and they don't have a radio, I can just hand them a radio and, uh, and then we've got instant communication. So there's a lot of pros and cons to deciding whether or not you want a handheld or mobile. You just need to think about what's best for you and your budget. Okay, let's talk a little bit about antennas. So there are a lot of factors that go into how well you're going to be able to transmit and receive a signal from your radio, but the antenna is such an important piece of that. And this is the ham antenna 
uh, off of my Jeep here and I mount this midway through my hood on the passenger side. And it works really, really well for me, but that's not ideal. If you're gonna do a mobile install, you've gotta figure out where you wanna put your antenna on the outside of your vehicle. Ideally, you want that thing up high, right in the center of your roof because it's not gonna have any obstruction, but that's just not practical for me. I can't get in and out of the garage if it was there. I have to take it on and off all the time, so that doesn't work. There are some other uh, devices like this little GMRS antenna, which is super compact, uh, and this works well. I've used this antenna, uh, but this is not going to transmit and receive as well as an antenna like this. Now, if you're gonna run a CB antenna, I learned years ago that it's not just as easy as just installing it and calling it good. Uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit of tuning using a little device like this, like an SWR meter. Uh, you're gonna have to make some adjustments. And once you dial in that CB radio, you're gonna get some great communications. Now, with a handheld radio, there are some handheld radios that you can swap out the antennas like we've done here. And you can see with this longer whip antenna, I'm gonna get, be able to transmit and receive a little bit better than I will with this one. Now, with FRS radios, these are fixed, and so you're stuck. That's all you're gonna get is that little tiny antenna. There's some other factors that go into how well you're gonna transmit and receive that aren't just uh, the antenna, but how much power is that radio putting out? So how strong is the signal you're gonna send? And then what is the terrain like? You know, if you're in the wide open desert, being able to communicate over several miles with some of these devices might be very easy. But if you're in the tight, narrow canyons, there's been times where I haven't been able to talk six or seven vehicles behind me just because we had so much obstruction. I did have a buddy here recently uh, that was on his ham radio here in San Diego, and he was talking to somebody in Japan just because the conditions were perfect. The weather was perfect. Everything was dialed in. It almost sounded like he was sitting right next to them. So there's a lot of factors that go into how well you're going to transmit and receive, but choosing the right antenna and mounting that antenna in the right place is very important. All right, let's talk about CB radios. All right, CB radios, the Citizens Band Radio. This radio has been popular for many, many years, especially in the 70s. If you grew up watching Smokey and the Bandit, you know, those guys were always talking on the radio over miles and miles. Uh, CB radios are very easily accessible. You can walk down to most of your local Walmarts and pick one of these up, turn it on, and start using it right away. No license required, which is really, really nice. A CB radio was the first radio I installed in my Jeep many years ago because my local Jeep club here required a CB radio for our events. And they've since switched to GMRS, and a lot of other organizations like the Jeep Jamboree and more are switching over to GMRS, and that's because, well, the technology with GMRS is just better than CB, and the FCC has kind of opened those regulations up to the public, which we'll talk about GMRS in a little bit. But CB still has a lot of practical use. Now, there are 40 channels on a CB radio. Channel 9 is typically for emergencies, and channel 19 is for highway use. And so I don't have a hard-mounted CB in my vehicle anymore, but I do still carry a handheld and that way, if there's an accident on the freeway or whatever, I can get on there and once in a while I'll be able to get a trucker on there and kind of tell me what's going on. So one thing to note though about CB is you're not going to get a whole lot of privacy. There's, others aren't going to get a lot of privacy either, but CB radio, it's easy to just cycle through and somebody just pick right up on your conversation. So just keep that in mind if you are using CB and talking. Now these are max of four watts. That's all they can put out. So they put out a little bit of power and if you tune that antenna, you're going to get some good range, but really it's line of sight. So line of sight range with the good ideally tuned antenna, uh, you might get three plus miles. I've never had that experience uh, with that. Uh, typically it's just been able to talk within our convoy within like, you know, a quarter or a half mile together. Uh, but CB is a good option and you don't require a license to use it. Now the next radio that you can go down to your local store and pick up and start using right out of the box are FRS radios or walkie talkies. Uh, and these are a great little radio if you just need to talk on short range. These radios are typically pretty inexpensive and there are 22 channels on here that you can use to communicate with. And it's really accessible for a lot of folks. You know, I've done some road trips where we've just used these FRS radios between my wife Regina and I. It works great as long as we aren't, you know, getting further and further apart. There have been times where I've been able to see her vehicle and she could just barely hear me. Uh, these only put out about a half watt and they have that small antenna. So you're not gonna get a lot of range out of there, but you don't need any license. Again, you can just start using them right out of the box. Now, 
GMRS, the General Mobile Radio Service, is really becoming more and more popular and people are starting to kind of gravitate to it because it does get such good range with these and you have a lot more options. So uh, these only have 22 channels. I believe these radios have 40 channels, but some of those are privacy tone channels, uh, which gets a little complicated. It just depends on the radio you're using. Uh, but the great thing about these radios and FRS radios, let me get the right one here, is they can talk to one another. So I'm on channel four, channel four, and they can talk to one another, which the channels one through 22 are low power channels, and so you can communicate on those. But if you wanted to go to the higher power channels, you can do that through the GMRS radios, and the mobile radio systems can go up to 50 watts. So you have a 50 watt radio with an awesome antenna, you're gonna get some great range with GMRS. Now, it's not as easy as going down to your local store and picking it up and buying it. You do need to go on the FCC website and register. There's no exam, you don't have to take any tests, you just have to register and pay a $35 fee. Now when I did it several years ago, it was a $70 fee. So they've reduced that fee, which means they're trying to make this a little more accessible to folks. I think GMRS is such a great option. It's better than CB and FRS in my opinion. Um, but. What about ham? Ham, I've been a ham user for a long time and I love ham. Let's talk about that for a minute. All right, ham communication. And in my opinion, this is the superior communication out of all of this stuff. I have been a licensed ham user for about the last uh, four years. Getting my ham license was something I was very glad I did. It took a little bit of work. I did do some studying and I took a one day class, but I passed my exam and I got my ham license. And being able to use the amateur radio system is so nice because your frequency spectrum is wide open and now you can run much higher powered radios and you just have so much more available to you. And so I think ham radios is, I think everybody should get their ham license just to get it. Even if you're gonna use the others, just get your license so you have that knowledge because I learned a lot going through uh, that exam process. One thing I will mention about ham radios is uh, you need to be responsible with using them. There's a lot of regulations uh, about using a ham radio. Don't get on frequencies and be a knucklehead. Uh, be responsible, be respectful, and make sure that you're licensed if you're using it and announce yourself on those. You can get a ham radio just for listening purposes. Uh, if you just wanna listen in, you're more than welcome to do that, but to transmit on a ham frequency, you need to have your license. Now you can transmit on all of these in an emergency anytime, but you need to be responsible with it. The other great thing about a ham radio is not only are these high powered and you can have some awesome antennas and talk over distances, you can use what's called a repeater. And so repeaters are these radio systems that are usually mounted up on a mountain somewhere and they're across the United States. And you can reach out and touch people using those repeaters over long distances. And I'll give you an example. So my buddy and I were meeting up and we were about 50 miles apart and we had coordinated in advance, hey, let's just see if we can talk on this repeater channel. We were 50 miles away. And so I was transmitting up to the repeater and bouncing down to him and he was doing the same thing. And we were talking clearly clear as day the entire drive until we met up. So there's some great tools uh, for using ham operating uh, devices and I think it's something you should consider. All right, uh, whoa, 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 one more thing. Make sure that you know uh, that your conversations are not always private. And that goes across all of these uh, communication devices, but uh, Marco and I were on uh, ham frequency heading up north, I think this was a couple months ago, and we weren't talking, we were just driving. And uh, we heard these guys on uh, our frequency that we happened to be on, and they were making fun of our vehicles. They were like, oh, Look at those mall crawlers. I'll bet they never take those things off road. Oh, that's all the money they spent on those things. And uh, as they were having this conversation, we see them driving by. They were in a couple of Nissans and they're still talking. Uh, you never know who's listening. We never said a word. Uh, you know, go watch the videos. We off road a little bit, but uh, it was just funny to see that because they didn't had no idea we could hear their conversation. So you just never know uh, who's listening in. So make sure that you're being responsible and respectful on your communications. All right, uh, just a couple of last things. One, uh, let's talk about race radios really quick. I don't use these uh, very often. I own these when I'm at like King of the Hammers or down in Baja. It's nice to have the race radios. 
These are pre-programmed radios. There's business channels on here, and then there's the rugged radios. I think it's one through 30 channels that you can use, uh, that you're only licensed to use. You can't program in specific frequencies, uh, but you need to make sure that if you are using one of the pre-programmed frequencies that you're either under rugged radios license or you're under one of the business licenses. Uh, we, we don't want to get in the weeds about that. I know we can uh, have a conversation just about that. Uh, again, I'm a ham operator. Uh, that's what I love using. I just have those radios just in case the group I'm with, that's all they have. Last device I want to talk about is satellite. And satellite communications has really come a long way in the last couple of years. Uh, you can get a satellite phone, uh, but satellite phones are pretty expensive. And um, unless you have that thing on all the time, you're not going to receive calls. And it just doesn't make sense to talk on a satellite phone if you're with a group, especially if you have these kind of uh, ranges with these kind of communication devices. But to be able to communicate with my wife uh, when I'm back home, when I'm off the grid, something like this little Garmin inReach uh, is perfect because this syncs up with my phone and I can text her through satellite and she can text me back uh, real time. Well, it's almost real time. Usually there's about a one or two minute delay there, uh, but it's very nice. Plus uh, she's able to see where I'm at all the time. So I wanted to include this into the communication conversation because this is an important tool. I have a ham radio everywhere I go. I always take this with me and I do carry GMRS and CB radios because I never know when I'm going to need one or the other. And that's the important thing about choosing the right communication device. You know, we've talked a lot about stuff here and you have to decide, do I want to get a license? Do I not want to get a license? Do I want to do a hard mounted one or do I just want to keep it simple and go with a handheld? There's a lot of options here, but one of the important factors is what are the people using that you're going to be going out with? What's the local area um, in your area? What are they communicating with? Because that's probably what you need to gravitate more towards. You know, I mentioned when I joined the San Diego Jeep Club, it was CBs. We all did CBs, but now they're all on GMRS and me and most of my friends are on ham radio. So I've got to make sure that I can communicate when I'm with both of those situations. You're going to have to do the same kind of thing. I would say GMRS is probably a great place to start. Go online and get your license and check it out and go grab yourself a handheld and start using it uh, and just get familiar with uh, with communications in general. All right, uh, that's it. I, I'm sure there'll be a ton of comments, especially from some of the avid communication hobbyists. Hopefully, I didn't. Uh, hopefully, I didn't stumble too much on that. But I enjoy talking about communications, and I wanted to have this conversation with y'all because I get a lot of questions. So I hope this was informative and somewhat helpful. Uh, thanks for hanging out in the garage, guys. Till next time, we'll see you out on the trails.